Right now in the top five, New Jersey just a point outside of the top five. That's right, they switched up team scoring a little bit this year. Previously, it had been eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one um, for placements, one through eight in that order. Now this year, you get 20 points for first place, uh, or excuse me, 25, 20, 15, it goes down, down, down. Uh, so a little bit different, kind of, um, a little bit similar, the same, you know, but not a little bit different. We will have a match right off the bat that has team race implications. Javon Yarbrough of Ohio taking on Hawken Peterson of Wisconsin at 88 pounds. Or, and I mean, that's the three and four teams in the team race right now, both Ohio and Wisconsin with 10 All-Americans. Ohio with three in the finals, Wisconsin with two. Ohio though has one All-American that's already been finished in eighth place, not able to, to compete the rest of the way through. So, you know, Really important one, Wisconsin trying to get on top of, Wis of Ohio here after. Uh, That's right, they're down. wrestled on our Jordan Burroughs, David Taylor, uh, Card and Lincoln back a handful of months ago this winter. Sam Herring, maybe you've heard of him from Pennsylvania. He's also a middle schooler, but has looked very tough this tournament. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. I'm also really looking forward to 138 pound matchup. Tyler Kasich and Joel Adams, you can see that on your screen right now. Real clash of styles. Joel Adams is a, a freestyle specialist, whereas Kasich specializes in, in folk style. Right. Um, and Joel Adams, not afraid to go big. He'll let it fly. He will let it fly. He's super powerful. Kasich, very fundamental, extremely positionally sound, and that's going to be a really fun one at 138. Joel Adams, unsurprisingly, likes to freco. Loves to freco, <laughs> of course. From Omaha. From Omaha, part of the MWC. And uh, so, hey, we got matches coming up here in just a couple of minutes. I cannot wait, JD. Let's get it. Here we go, JD. On your screen, you see Javon Yarbrough coming out to the mat. And I'm excited for him. He is going to be a sophomore in high school. He's from Copley, Ohio. Central Regional Champion this year and has been super solid. Now we're getting the smoke machine fired up for Hawken Peterson. <laughs> Peterson of Hollandale, Wisconsin. He was a U15 champ in freestyle and Greco this year and that's a that's a tough tournament to win but he did it looked really good doing it and now he's found himself in the Fargo finals against Javon Yarborough let's see what happens shake hands and we're underway both guys coming out in three and four point stances staying low Little now oh, Yarborough nice. getting to the body and getting behind he puts the first points of the match on the board early here in the first period Keep an eye on this kid. He's ended every match early so far in this tournament. None have gone the distance. He has been nothing but trouble for all of his opponents. Peterson's been in a couple of scraps. Had a, a three-point victory in the quarters, a one-point victory in the semis. In fact, Yarbrough has yet to see the second period in the match, which is especially impressive given that these are two-minute periods. Yeah. They go by fast. 
with those two minute periods, you sometimes see passivity really come into play when there's still action, but they have to put somebody on the clock a minute in. Not as often in these lighter weights, you see Yarbrough with the shuck by just through Peterson to the mat and gets the takedown, extends his lead to four. Looking to work out front, get a turn. He has he has dangerous parterre offense. And Peterson, I think, was, was warned about the lays, keeping his legs apart. Yarbrough also has a nice trap arm that he uses sometimes. Low shot from Yara comes up to the two on one, but Peterson clears. A little shuck by attempt there. Again for Yarbrough, man, he is, he is quick with it. May see the power of Yarbrough here. He can go head pinch. He can go chest wrap if he needs to. Peterson able to survive that position though in just 20 seconds left in the first. We'll see if one guy tries to fire off an attack here in the period, either closing out the distance in the score or Yarbrough extending. Good control of Matt here for Peterson, but Yarbrough turns that into his points. Nice little pick. And there was that power you were talking about. Both guys kind of shot in, but it was Yarbrough who was able to power through and get the takedown. So a 6-0 lead at the break, he is in a very solid position. This is definitely the, the, the most he's been tested so far. Hasn't seen the second period yet, but very much in control. Yeah, he's a beast. He got onto my radar at Cadet Duels, uh, where I watched him, and he went undefeated, I believe, 4-0 um, at 88 pounds there as well. And at these lighter weights, not quite as deep, and Yarbrough's taking full advantage. He's a stud and dominating. For sure, and for once, wrestling guys is on size, normally wrestling up at 106, and you can see what he can do. He's down at 88. Let's see if he pulls the trigger here. Garbo trying to take Peterson to the edge. They will be grounded now. So no points on that action out of bounds. Minute 36 to go. Peterson's got to get his way to some points if he wants to find his way back in the match. There, Peterson's getting to the leg, but Yarbrough nicely pivots on the edge. He won't even get, just get the step out. He'll get two on the takedown. Great effort on the edge by Yarbrough. Now just a takedown away from winning this match early. Underhook for Yarbrough, see what he does with it. Heavy snap, trying to get to an angle. Good job staying in front though by Peterson. Yarbo trying to make it a perfect early termination streak. He's now got about 50 seconds to do so. One takedown will do it. Peterson, good control of Matt, but sometimes pushing has led to Yarborough points. Yarborough holding on to that left side underhook that he's been doing pretty much this whole second period. 25 seconds left. Coaches in Yarbrough's corner really encourage him to go get it. Goes big on the oh. edge, but four points for Peterson. Now, hey, just nine seconds left, JD, but a four-pointer would would give. Now, did, now, did they just rule okay, one? No, four. that's four. Yeah. yeah. Another four would give Peterson the win, but that's not going to happen. Paul offered, not confirmed. So just on points, Javon Yarbrough is your 88 pound Fargo champion. Big flex from Yarbrough, he's fired up. It got a little interesting at the end there. Peterson had to go for something big. He tried it, Yarbrough capitalized and big win for Javon Yarbrough. A nice oh, backflip. Oh, get you some young man. There we go. And JD, this, this place is pretty packed for these finals. Yeah. And paying this man his respect after not only a dominant win but also 
a backflip. And uh, we're going to have a replay coming up here. You can see, wow, incredible shuck by there from Yarbrough. He is lightning with that. And he did try and go back to that a time or two later in the match, but good job by Peterson. He made the adjustments he needed to um, to stop it, but Yarbrough is still just too much. And there's that big flex. Impressive, impressive performance. He's your champion, 88 pounds. Right, 94 pounds. Next up, we've got Mac Mauger in the red, wrestling for Idaho, out of Blackfoot, Idaho. Some solid wrestlers come out of Blackfoot. I know All-American Alfonso Hernandez was from there, and he gives a big slap to the coaches in the corner, big high five. He's taking on a Virginia man, Cadell Lee from Stafford, Virginia. And this will be an interesting clash of styles. Mauger, super solid. He is very, very freestyle and Greco savvy. He was in the cadet trials finals in both freestyle and Greco Roman. You mentioned some good wrestlers that have come out of Blackfoot, um, also out of the state of Idaho. Ridge Lovett, who was notoriously very good at Fargo. <laughs> yes, he was. He was on this stage many times and we're underway. And now actually back coaching with Team Idaho this year here in Fargo. Cool absolutely, absolutely. Right away, Mauger putting the pressure on, coming under hook now to the high crotch, trying to switch off to the double, goes back to just the high crotch, brings it down, up to the body, he's looking for four, just gonna get two. Great edge of the mat wrestling there from Mauger. He's definitely your favorite here. Ranked number 14 at 106, and obviously can make 94, no problem, so. Another guy like Yarbrough we discussed earlier who He's not a full-size 106, but has already proven how good he is, and he's trying to get points on the edge again. Good job from Mauger, finishing that takedown on the edge. Now he's got a gut locked up, going with the full elbow-to-elbow -elbow lock, looking to go to the right. Good defense, though, from Lee. See, he floats, floats it off and out of bounds. Doesn't give up the gut. Still just four to zero. Lee. Like Mauger wrestles both freestyle and Greco. He was in the Northeast uh, Northeast Regional Finals in both styles this year. Low shot from Lee, re-attack Mauger. He's to the left leg of Lee, trying to get to the angle. There he does, comes up to the waist. Now he's gotta get a knee or an elbow or a head down. There he puts lead down, extends his lead to six, transitions right into a leg lace, and he's got it. He's, he's got to run his feet. There's one, one more will be the tech. Pop, popping his hips, trying to run it over. Lee holding on somehow, though, I'm not sure how. And slips it out, so good lace from Mauger, but tough defense from Lee. Avoids giving up the tech fall, but eight to zero Mauger with just 10 seconds to go in the opening period. Two on one on the wrist for Mauger. Gonna ride out the period here. Oh, nope, he's going for points. Nah, not so fast. Time does run out though. So you know, Mauger going into the break up eight to zero. Really impressive opening period. Mauger really dominant. You know, Lee has been able to stop that parterre offense on a couple of occasions, and that's not something that very many people have been able to do against Mac Mauger in this tournament. So Lee showing some fight, will you know, big hole to dig out of, but match isn't over. We saw we saw a, a match on this stage earlier today. Christian Carroll was down 8-0, came all the way back and won, I think, 15 to 10. So it can be done. Action underway, second period. Minnesota's Zach Hansen was down eight to zero in his semifinal and came back to win as well. So that's the thing about freestyle. A lot of points can go up on the board really quick. Absolutely. 
both wrestlers kind of locked into ear to ear Lee pressuring in taking Mogger to the zone Mogger doing a, a good job of planting that back foot and staying in now circling in and now he's pressuring in taking Lee to the zone Mogger like Yarbrough earlier finished every match early on his way to the finals and trying to close it out Lee though not giving up he's Good job controlling center of the mat. He's close to one. Oh, Mogger just towing that line. His heel was over, but the full foot has to be out of bounds. Mogger not giving up there. His head did hit out of bounds, so that'll be one point for Lee. Kyle Lee with a point on the board. 52 seconds to go. He's got to pick it up. Elbow control for Mogger. Lee walking him to the edge again. Yeah, I don't think you're going to step step out your way to a victory here, though. No, he needs something big. Big move or takedown to lay something like that. Trying for a cross ankle pick and an outside trip, but Mogger holding on to the right arm of Lee. Now Lee trying to step over. Two called and confirmed. There is the takedown for Lee. Short time left, he's gonna have to get on his parterre offense. He's got the right leg hooked. We'll see if he can do anything with it. Tries to swim the hips over, but just too little too late. A3, Mag Mogger, the Fargo champ. He gives a big flex, fired up. Idaho with a champ. Good work by Mogger, representing the state of Idaho. Really impressed with his performance throughout the weekend. And he's his opponent at 15U, Bo Bassett, is wrestling the Cadet World tomorrow. That's right. Speaking of which, good performance for Team USA this morning. Absolutely. Four in the semis. Here's the replay. The dominant opening period for Mogger. You can see him working for that gut out of bounds and not able to get it. Big flex. Mac Mogger. Put one on the board for Idaho. Good for him. Of course, we do have all American matches having happening on the other mats right now. Those are going to be really important in the team race as well. Let's go quad you can go the quad laser view. Quad laser view. One of my favorite views. It's one of the best. <laughs> it's one of the best views there is. And here we go. 100 pounders coming to the mat. Seth Mendoza from Illinois. Taking on Christian Castillo of Arizona. Mendoza going to be a freshman this year. Castillo will be a freshman as well. Arizona with a really nice tournament. Both 16 new and junior. They've pulled off some incredible upsets. That's right, they're in eighth place right now in the 16 new team race, seventh in the junior race. They normally have one or two guys that really do well at Fargo, but now putting a handful of guys on each team yeah. high up on the podium. Absolutely. Arizona currently in eighth place as a team. Strong work. Nice shot there from Mendoza. Trying to come out the back. Head car wheel for Castillo, though. Good creative defense. And they're going to rule that grounded. No points. Nice work from Castillo to keep himself grounded. Mendoza backing on another attack. Let's see if he tries to go straight back. Thought about it, but now trying to finish a little more traditionally. Castillo doing a good job though controlling that ankle for now. Minute 13 left in the period. Level change there for Mendoza. He's been all over Castillo's legs. Inside control for Mendoza and that inside control will get Castillo called for passive. He will be on the clock. He has 30 seconds to score or a point. We'll go on the board for Mendoza. 
Mendoza with the flowing main course and now needs a score in just the next 15 seconds otherwise going to give up a point. And that's oh close to scoring. He's got 9 seconds to do it. Outside step, but Mendoza's going to score four offered, four confirmed. I thought they were just going to go two, but they do go four points for Seth Mendoza. Yeah, Mendoza did a nice job getting that exposure and now has a 4-0 lead in this first period. Looking for a lace on the edge. Out of bounds though. Now unfortunately for Mendoza, that was just a second or two before the passive clock was up, so only four points, not the one plus the four. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd take the four in that situation. Uh, well, I would take four over one as well. <laughs> Short time left here in the period. Mendoza gonna take that 4-0 lead into the break. Guys will get some instruction from their corners. We'll be back to action. Mendoza and Castillo both rising into the high school ranks after this year or after the summer. And you see Mendoza there with the Crown Point high school headgear on. You know who else is from Crown Point? Of course. A one Jesse Mendez. Maybe you've heard of him. I have heard of him. It's pretty decent. Pretty good. Number one pound for pound high school wrestler in the country. That's right, we'll be wrestling in the Junior World Championships here in about a month. Hard tie from Mendoza. Mendoza coming forward on the edge. I should edge. say I believe that's a crown point headgear. It's the same CP logo and a bulldog on the side. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it is. He's gonna be at Mount Carmel High School, so Unless they're using donated gear, I think that's probably right. Underhook Mendoza. Really moving Castillo around. He's gonna get one on this step out. Yep, you see the referee pointing there. Mendoza gets the opportunity for the takedown and he will take advantage and get it. You saw the referee pointing there. That means that only, and now we get a brick coming out from the Arizona corner. This this is not a bad brick. I, I think, depending on what camera angle they're gonna be looking at, it's quite possible that Castillo still had that, that leg hooked as they went out of bounds. But yeah, finish your explanation of that rule. Yes, so as soon as the official points to the out of bounds like that, only the wrestler who did not step out can score. They give him the opportunity, but once you step out, you cannot score a takedown, or any points for that matter. I have mixed feelings about the rule. It, it You know, you want to re reward offense, you want the offensive wrestler to continue attacking, but the problem if you're the defensive wrestler is you have you have no way to score, and that's the beauty of wrestling is is either guy can score in any sequence. That rule basically rule you know it decides that now the defensive wrestler can no longer score. All you can do is hold Different. on, and we're not used to wrestling for just you know to the opportunity to defend. You're used to scoring points, so. Don't love the rule, but these guys know the rule, which is why Castillo tried to hook that ankle. And I think he did. We'll see what they decide after the review. Illinois is traditionally one of the top freestyle states right now sitting in Ninth. Ninth place, yeah. One in the finals, and, and it's Mendoza. Yeah. And we, we're excuse here. me, I'm, uh, no, that's right, yeah. One in the finals. Weird year for Illinois. They had their state tournament in June, I believe, their folk style uh, state sanctioned tournament. And that threw kind of everything off for Illinois. They're a team that normally brings as many of their best guys as they can. Um, they have a system down, and it works. <laughs> They've for the most part, dominated Fargo the past decade, and the state tournament threw that off this year. It sure did. Along with other COVID restrictions, too, probably. Strange year, for sure. Mentioned Illinois in ninth. Arizona sitting in seventh place. They have also four All-Americans, like Illinois, but three in the finals. We'll see Adrian Meza at 120 pounds. And 
addition to Christian Castillo here, we will also see Kyler Larkin. And with those, the new scoring system, it's weighted a little bit heavier to the champ, um, the higher placings than previously. Like I said, not much, it's pretty similar, but 25 and two versus one and eight, that's eight times versus 12 and a half times as many. So they did confirm the call, putting another point on the board for Mendoza, he now leads 7-0. Looked for a step out there, couldn't get it. Now heavy snaps from Castillo. Mendoza trying to get to a leg, but can't quite reach it. Front head position now for Castillo. Mendoza back to his feet and dives under for the Firemans. Once again, can't get to it. Back to the front headlock, but the referee stands him up, puts him back in the center, 40 seconds to go. Nice shot from Mendoza, he's in deep. Castillo looking for a hip tip, kind of threatening there, and it was enough to shake Mendoza off, at least for a little bit. Once again, keeping Mendoza at bay with that hip tip, and the two go out of bounds from the grounded position, no points. Another shot there from Castillo. Mendoza now working from front head. Castillo brings it up to a two on one. Now the same position. Mendoza underneath, holding on to an elbow. Not scoring, but burning a lot of clock. And there is the final second off the board. Seth Mendoza, your champion at 100 pounds with a seven to zero decision over Christian Castillo. Seth Mendoza, Illinois' only finalist, and he's a national champ. Does Illinois proud on the big stage, and he's gonna get his stop sign and celebrate with his coaches. He's, he, he seems pretty cool about this whole thing. He's not, not, too, not too affected. Just nothing, just another day at the office. Another day at the office for Seth Mendoza. Indeed, he's taking a stop sign home. And here we see a replay, both guys coming out, smiling at the opportunity, and there's that first grounded action. Big four-pointer, that's where Mendoza really changed the temper of the match, and then scores this takedown on the edge as well, towards the end. There it is. All right, well, we are gonna be right back in just a minute after this short commercial break.
Stop sign for Meza. He's, he's excited. As he should be, Fargo champ. Yeah. There he goes, holds up that stop sign. Good work from him. And 126 coming up should be interesting, but first we're going to look at a replay of Meza and Valencia. There's that takedown. The one takedown of the match, it was a really nip and tuck match. Otherwise, that takedown separated. There you see the frustrated Valencia and Meza gets it done. We're gonna move up to 126 pounds. We're gonna see Kyler Larkin of Arizona, the, the uh, 126 pounder who upset Mason Gibson. He's gonna see Landon Robido of St. Michael, Minnesota. Yeah, here comes Larkin. Arizona, uh, probably all hair team so far here in the finals. No question, I mean, <laughs> yeah, between between the uh, between the mullet that we saw at 100 Castillo. pounds from Christian Castillo and this the Kyler Larkin flow, they've 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 really they've really put forward their A game. All right, action underway. Kyler Larkin going to be a sophomore at Valiant Prep in Arizona. Landon Robido going to be a a, what's he gonna do? He's gonna be a freshman at St. Michael, Al Michael Alberville. He's already a two-time Minnesota State runner-up in the high school division. Official warning Larkin. He doesn't do anything here, and he will get hit for passive, and he does. Just his first. The next one will be the shot clock. Underhook for Robido. The match we just saw from Mesa was, was similar to the one that Kyler Larkin had against Mason Gibson last night. Super, super close until the end when all of a sudden he laced him up a bunch of times and teched him. That's right. Robido gets on the board first with a step out. Heavy snap from Larkin to go right back into the tie. Robita looking for the two on one, clears out, now punches, underhook. Little tree outside, foot sweep there for Larkin, but can't pull it up to his hands. Robito just doing a really good job controlling this match with that underhook. This has been Robito's match so far, wrestled in his ties, his positions. There you see him punch that seatbelt and try to throw the underhook by, but Larkin holding on with that overhook. And that brings the first period to a close. The step out for Robito, the only points to score. Really solid positioning for Robido. Larkin getting a little instruction here as well. Arizona would love to go back to back in the finals. Team race wise. After the victory at 120, they are in seventh place. Attempt there from Larkin. He wanted to use the wanted to use that overhook to whip Robido down. Didn't work. Oh, 
point on the step out. That's going to give Larkin the lead on criteria. Really hard snap there from Robido. Larkin, though, endures it. Now he's got Robido in front head position. Heavy snap from Larkin. Duck attempt, Robido. Now slide by Larkin, he gets to the feet. Nice second effort too by Larkin. Gets the leg in. No points yet. Robito still holding on to that wizard. He's got it really tight. Larkin's arm is really stuck in there. And the referee stands him back up. No points. So good job holding on to that wizard by Robito. Hard snap from Larkin. He has really amped his phys physicality in this second period. And doing a good job, but Robito continue to come forward. There's a drag to that shot. Larkin recovers well. 20 seconds. Big position on the edge. Out of grounded. bounds, grounded. Don't get me started on the grounded roll. I won't even get you started. Nice <laughs> job by Larkin. That'll be two. Big two on the edge. Robido can still win this with a takedown, though. 10 seconds to go. Heavy snap, pressure in. Larkin coming down to the leg from the inside. Robito trying to whip him back, but time runs out. Kyler Larkin, your champion. How about Arizona's Fargo? How about Arizona's Fargo? How about Kyler Larkin's Fargo? Incredible win last night in the semis. That was the loudest the Fargo Dome has been. And now, another impressive win in the finals. He is a Fargo champ, well earned. Getting his award from Tanner Schedule, wrestled at the Naval Academy. Pretty cool. And now you see the replay. This guy's walking out and not a ton of action that scored points, but these guys did get in some interesting sequences. They're close to scoring on numerous occasions. Here was right here was the takedown for Larkin. In such a tight match, that was a huge takedown. Yeah, all hair team for sure, JD. You're right about that. Right. Moving up to 132, Chris Coates of Missouri in the red. He's taking on Zach Hansen of Minnesota. He's gonna be coming out here in just a minute in the blue. Coates placed at the UWW Cadet Trials. He was sixth there this year and looks solid in a very tough bracket. Hansen. Northern Plage champ this year. And we're seeing back-to-back -back Minnesota finalist. Hanson, one of four finalists for Minnesota. Of course, we just saw Robido. Shot attempt there from Coates. Coates couldn't quite get locked on that single. And they're gonna call Hanson for passivity. Often in these cadet matches, you see that come, come pretty early like that, and that's just a part of having a two minute period. Pass 
Must have offered and confirmed once again on Hanson. So he will go on the clock. Minute to go and 20 seconds left on that shot clock. Hanson controlling center. Coates doing a good job staying in bounds. Five seconds to go on the passive clock. Hanson really trying for a step out but can't get it. One point on the board for Coates. Coates may get hit for passivity soon too. Yeah, and he is going to. So that could come into play. Hopefully we'll see some points on the board other than step outs, but if we don't, Hanson just did a good job of putting himself in position to get Coates on the clock. But now Coates moving forward. Period one comes to a close. Coates up one to zero on the passive clock point. Just that single point, you know, you see sometimes in a big stage like this, guys play a little conservative. They, they would hate to lose and, you know, especially you get two positionally solid, strong guys, it sometimes doesn't produce a whole ton of points. I got a feeling it'll open up here just a little bit in the second period. Hanson firing off a shot. Now Coates, neither one can get past the head hands defense of the other though. They're gonna put Coates on the clock. So if he doesn't score in the next 30 seconds, Hanson will have the lead on criteria. Halfway through the passive clock period, Coates not really trying too hard. He might be willing to give up that point. Yeah. He's gonna need to find his way to some points otherwise, and now 1-1. One, one. Hansen leads on criteria. Zach Hansen working Coates towards the out of bounds. Two hanging out in the over under position. And Coates is gonna get hit again for passivity. We're gonna put him on the clock again with just 43 seconds left. A little antsy, jumping the gun just a little bit there is Coates. He needs to get going. He's picking up his footwork, picking up the hand fight. 30 to go. And 30 to go. Hansen can't start backing up too hard now. Can't give up caution one. There's that shot clock point. But still, just one more point for Hanson would give him the lead on criteria. Yeah, basically an irrelevant point. Point for Coates, pardon me. But he's not gonna get it. Zach Hanson, 2-1 on two shot clock points. He's a Fargo champ for Minnesota, 132 pounds. Classic shot clock point match. Shot, co shot clock, that, that's the, the argument that folk style fans make uh, against freestyle is that that shot clock point is the kind of match you're gonna see a lot. You don't see them very often, but we just had one there and it's I agree that's, that's not the best kind of match. But hey, Zach Hansen got it done. Great tournament all the way through and he's your champ. Now we're gonna see a replay of some of the An action. Exciting <laughs> replay. I wonder, <laughs> yeah, I wonder what, 
<laughs> what they picked out here. Okay, there's a level change. <laughs> And another level change, but you know what? That's all right. Hey, you know what? If you want to see a wild one, go back and watch Zach Hansen's semifinal. He had a 16 to 11 victory That's right. there. He was down eight to zero. My man's was one takedown away from getting tech falled before coming back to win. He actually he put up 16 straight. <laughs> it was two points away from a tech fall himself. Poor Wasilewski came back and did score three points, but. Wow. Hanson, obviously, your winner, 16 to 11. This but might be the match that I'm looking forward to the most. 138 pounds, Tyler Kasich in the red. He's taking on Joel Adams in the blue. Kasich from Pennsylvania. And yeah, wrestles for powerhouse program, Bethlehem Catholic. That's right, was a, was a state champ this year. Joel Adams from Omaha, Nebraska. Millard South High School wrestles with MWC, that's Zach Dominguez's club. And he's a freestyler through and through. Kasich, just really, really positionally solid. And um, great attacks too. Slide by Kasich. One offer, they may rule this grounded white paddle and white paddle, no points. You see it going back to that slide by, Adams felt it a little better this time though. Adams warned for passivity. Low shot off the whistle. Kasek Adams not really threatened. And that slide by again for Adams. Gets it done in the center this time. Picks up two points on the takedown. Yeah, great slide by by Kasek. He's so effective with that. And now looking for a lace. Adams not letting him do much with that. So back to our feet. 2-0. Kasich leads. Tried that slide by again. Why not? What's that, four times already this match? I think so. So many more times he tries it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Both these guys are going to be juniors in high school next year. Kasich's grown quite a bit in the offseason. He has. He's a guy who started his career at 106 pounds. And another takedown for Kasich with short time in the first period and on the edge. Those could be big points. Adams tried to hip over. He is, he's got uncanny awareness with those hips, but not able to get the points there. Time's gonna run out in the first, and big first period for Tyler Kasich. In addition to training at that Bethlehem Catholic program, also trains at the M2 Training Center, and you do see, you do see shades of David Taylor in some of the things that Kasich does. That club is, is helping kids develop quite a bit, as are a lot of clubs in PA, but let's see Kasich here, he's doing a good job. Second period underway, Adams trails by four. He definitely has four point potential. Can go big move with the best of them. And a four-pointer would put him in the lead on criteria. No four-pointer there for Adams, just the one on the step out. Coming forward again, another step out. 
Kasich has got to be careful. He could start giving up caution in ones. Keeps giving up step outs like that. Absolutely. See if Adams can use the threat of that to open something up. Adams faking now, shooting in. Uh-oh, he is dangerous from here. Switching off to a double. Quad pod position. Two points, puts him in the lead here. He's looking for a gut. He's got good Fell parts here offense. Yeah, very good gut. He's elbow to elbow. That's deep. Kasich doing a good job with those legs defending. Running to but the man. left. Kasich hops over, though. Kasich had those feet engaged a lot in that defense, and you saw that allowed him to step over and Kasich back in the lead. Adams had the lead on criteria momentarily, but not for long. Six, four, pardon me, Adams did not have the lead on criteria. He's got two one-pointers. Adams kind of doing that stutter step. Can't get to the legs. Kasich doing a good job staying low. One for Adams on the step out and a point won't be enough for Adams. He needs at least two. Fourteen seconds. Big sprint here for Adams. Oh. Head pinch, he got it. With five seconds to go, he can't give up. Can't give up any points here. And time runs out, Joel Adams wins. <laughs> wow. Coach Ivanov fired up. Joel Adams is too. Man, huge flex. He got it done, JD. He came back to the center. There were 14 seconds on the clock. And he needed two points. He got two points at the last possible second. And this kid is feeling it. Most exciting match of the finals so far. Yeah. Good for Joel Adams, good for Nebraska. Man, what a match. I can't wait for the replay of that one. 14 seconds left and one point wasn't gonna be enough. He got it done. Joel Adams fired up and he should be. Here Here's is that replay. Early step out. And I think, you know, you kind of mentioned the freestyle maybe inexperience or how good Kasich is at folk style. And it showed with all those step outs and it came back to hurt him. There's that chest and wrap. And the, the chest end. wrap mm -hmm, at the end. <laughs> you see Coach Ivanov just pumped up. There you see the new entrance here at Fargo, the first year they've done kind of the uh, WWE style entrance. I like it. Yes. And it, it, yeah, it, it, it's a good looking entrance. And it was a fitting entrance for William Hinkle in the red of Connecticut. Connecticut with pizza on their singlets. I don't know why, but I'm, I like it. It's I dig a, it. It's that famous Connecticut pizza. And he's taking on Pearson Manville in the blue. Manville, the Manville family, no strangers to Fargo. Or the Halo headgear. Or the Halo headgear. Manvilles and Halo headgear go together like lamb and tuna fish. Uh, good Big Daddy reference. And we are underway here at 145 pounds. Manville looking for a two on one. Henkel posting on the head. The referee warning Henkel and now we'll stop it. Manville is a hard hand fighter, like his brothers before him. And just moving Henkel all over the mat with that two on one. That'll be good for caution and one. All three said caution and one. Only two did, but all three confirmed that was caution and one there. Unanimous. 
You can't just try and back out of that. You gotta wrestle through that position, that two on one. And if I'm Manville, I'm going right back to that two on one. Yep, there he jumps to it. Yep, and you see him going right back to it. And once again, pushing Hinkle all over the mat. Now getting to the legs on the edge, picking up the step out. Hinkle has to make an adjustment here. Manville's hand fight has just been a little too much for him. Manville, like Kasich, trains at M2 Training Center with David Taylor. Manville going back to that two on one. And he can't quite get to it that time. Manville staying low, controlling center, pressuring in from this over under position. Good forward pressure there for Manville Hinkle. Still staying in bounds for the moment. Short time left here in the first period. And the Space Jam soundtrack will take us into the break. 30 seconds for these guys to towel off, get some instruction from their coaches. Yeah, it was the pressure in the hand fight of Manville in that first period that really got to Hankel. He did make some adjustments, was able to circle from the over under position there for the last so 30 seconds or so and avoid giving up another step out. Good shot of the slice of pizza there for, on the Connecticut singlet. Well, the whole back is, the top half is a slice. Those are pepperonis, people. Not just polka dots. One of the, yeah, Pepperoni I mean, polka dots. It's gotta be the top, top grossing pizza <laughs> in the country. They have Casey's in Connecticut? I doubt it. <laughs> 145 to go in this match. Well then I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna hear about their pizza then. Manville was really very, very much in control of that first period, but just the two points on step on uh caution and one and then also a step out. So if Hankel can find his way to a takedown, he'll be in the lead. Now Hankel moving forward. Yeah, now it's Hinkle control and center. But they're offering passive and side and table confirm. Passive against Hinkle. Now he's gonna go on the clock. That one surprises me a little bit with Hinkle controlling center. The coaches from the Connecticut corner uh, are arguing that, that there was never a warning for passivity, so Hinkle shouldn't go on the clock, but I think that caution and warn earlier probably serves as a warning. Hinkle gets to a shot, this is huge. And just like that, Hinkle takes the lead on criteria. Maybe he just needed, you know, to get on that clock, a little kick in the rear. That kick in the rear has him in the lead with just 25 seconds to go. We're gonna come back up to our feet. Two on one for Manville. Henkel circling, he's gotta be careful he doesn't give up caution to one. This is pretty much the same situation where he gave it up in the first. Manville just running and circling. Arm spin attempt for Manville. And that actually hurt him, got him out of the two on one position, and Hankel's gonna win. William Hankel did not have the momentum early, but he came back, got the takedown late, and won. William Hankel, Fargo champ, 145 pounds. And man, what a what a turn of the tides, JD. That was that was savvy wrestling late. 
Yeah, uh, Manville came out and looked like he might really take control of that match, was moving Hinkle all over the mat, and Hinkle made adjustments, and Manville didn't go back to that two-on-one as much either. That, that could be something he could look back on and say, think he may, might have, should have done. 100%, you're gonna see a replay here, and this is gonna be you know, a tale of two periods. You see, we'll see, we'll see what they chose, but yeah, you can just see Manville just running Hinkle all over the mat. This is the step out. And then Hinkle drops in on the shot, gets the takedown late. Great stuff from William Hinkle. We're gonna see a really interesting match here at 152. And it's gonna be Zach Ryder from New York. He's gonna be wearing the red when he comes out. He's ranked 11th in the country, super powerful. 52 pounder from New York. Just a freshman, gonna be a sophomore next year. Kinda new to freestyle, but, but very, very solid. He's gonna take on KJ Evans, who's kind of a breakout star this weekend. KJ has, has looked outstanding. He was, a, he was a state champion this year, 4A in Oklahoma at 152, and he's gonna be a junior, but this is a big opportunity for him against Zach Ryder, ranked 11th. Team Oklahoma's only finalist here this afternoon. He has some tools, man. He, he looked outstanding in the semis. Ryder goes big on the edge. That'll be four. You know, the first round of the tournament, Zach Ryder looked a little hesitant, like he was still kind of figuring out freestyle, but he has he's definitely made good adjustments as this tournament's gone on, and that was a big four-pointer on the edge. AJ, or excuse me, KJ, looking for a shot. Ryder sprawls, now in front head. Trying to get to an angle, can't quite put his head in the hole. Now he does, gets to the leg. KJ big. with the big chest wrap. That'll be two points. 4-2, Ryder leads, but you see the danger that KJ Evans presents. And something like that, uh, a head pinch like that, you feel that once, it'll make you a little hesitant, possibly, about shooting again. Same position here, Ryder trying to put his head in the hole. Ryder really good at those go-behinds. Now looking for a cradle. Wow, really nice defense there from Evans. Fought for hand control and then turned to face. Ryder taking Evans to the edge. Evans really planting his feet though. Now he does step out. So a point will go on the board for Ryder. He extends his lead to three points. 5-2, lots of good action with 11 seconds to go in this first period. They'll head to the break. And both guys, I think, probably feeling like they're still very much in this match, like they have a good shot here. like to see maybe a little bit of your own attacks if you're in the Evans corner. His two came off the shot from Ryder. Yeah, definitely the offense of Evans. Still a little bit of a mystery in this match. He's got two minutes to show it though as they come back to the center. Evans looking for a two on one. Ryder had the angle for a second, but Evans squares up. Ryder with the hip toss. He's going to pick up two on the far end. 7 2. Ryder looking solid. Yeah, Zach Ryder just felt the pressure. 
timed that hip toss nicely there. Evans a little slow to kick back to the center. Evans going Evans big. Body attacking line. the body. Came up big with the double unders. Two points on the board. You wanted to see the offense, JD. There's a there's a glimpse. He's got big move potential and getting to that body lock on somebody as strong and solid as Zach Ryder is no easy task. Yeah, Evans now down holding his ankle though, and the trainer comes out to take a look at it. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything either. The, when they went out of bounds before, Evans was a little slow to get back, and it, it you know, I wasn't sure if he was hobbling or if he was just uh, still kind of mentally recovering from the position. But, but I think I don't think it was something that happened there. I think it's something that happened a little bit before. But he's shaking his head, standing up. He's going to be okay. He'll return. While they're figuring this injury out, just a reminder, we also have the Cadet World Championship going on right now. Team USA in first place, JD. Four semifinalists. Four finalists. Final, excuse me, yes, finalists. Four finalists out of five weight classes that we've competed so far. The finals will be tomorrow. Also tomorrow, the remaining five men's freestyle weights are gonna be contested through the semis. And USA also undefeated against Russia, 3-0 so far. You love to see that. We're back to action here. Love to see that as well. Evans, good to continue. Shot from Evans. Go behind for Ryder. He's got the head and leg. Ryder doing a good job getting, trying to get back to that head pinch where he scored earlier. Can't get it done this time though. Two points for Ryder. Evans went for broke there. He has he has really elusive defense didn't. when guys are attacking, but went big on the edge, didn't work out. Ryder felt at that time he stayed on the head with the left hand a very long time. Didn't want to come off when he did. That's when Evans was able to kind of circle out front and at least gets the head pinch. And now he's getting to a double right into a lace. Beautiful. One, two punch there from Evans. Ooh, he is in pain. That ankle's hurting, and we saw the grimace on his face. Trainer's gonna come out. He's down by just a point with 42 seconds to go, and we know how dangerous a situation like that can be. We saw just at 140, or excuse me, at 138, we saw a crazy finish there. At 145, we saw a super crazy finish, and Ryder has been in control a lot of this match, but He's Big sequence there from Evans, he's right in it. Evans has shown he has the capabilities to score when he has to. Yeah, he can score from his offense or from, or from Ryder's attacks. Now less than 45 seconds to, the go, to go as Evans walks back to the center. There we go. See what he has. Thirty now. Evans with a thumb block, diving in on a couple shots. Can't even really get close. Go behind for Ryder. Just one this time. I believe a takedown would still give criteria to Evans. Well, Ryder had that four pointer earlier. You're right. You're right. Excuse me. Evans coming forward. So Evans needs more than two, nine seconds left. That's a tall order. 
Two on one for Evans, coming forward, Ryder circles, steps out in the process though, it's 10 to nine. Four if seconds. Evans, if he can get a takedown in four seconds, he's gonna win this match. He got to the leg. Rolling he start. got to the other leg. It's close. No, Ryder holds on. Big Zach flexion. Ryder, the beach ball flex in the Spartan combat singlet, giving New York a Fargo champion. Wild match. Yeah, hat, hats off to KJ Evans. He made it fun, made it close, but Zach Ryder holds on. Wins 10 to nine. Yeah, incredible, incredible match there from both guys and Zach Ryder got it done. I'm looking forward to the replay. Hopefully we're gonna see that big four pointer at the beginning. And here you see those guys coming out. Here's that four pointer early. Put Evans on his back. That really set the tone for the match. And that chest wrap for Evans. Ryder too solid. They got into that position quite a few times. KJ Evans shoot, would shoot. Ryder puts his head in the hole, comes behind. Evans was able to score the chest wrap off of it the first time, but the next few times Ryder picked up the takedown. And there on your screen, you see Mr. Lamer from Oregon. The youngest and largest of the Lamer brothers. Yes. <laughs> Dashiell Lamer, of course his brother. Chance and Legend. Chance and, and Legend and who else? There's another Lamer that, that you're missing. Uh, but the, the older two are at Cal Poly and Chance is at Michigan. Michigan. Just about to get started in Michigan. And so Dashiell Lamer in the red. He's taking on Louis Sergio in the blue. Lamer of Oregon, Sergio, New Jersey. We've seen that singlet a few times already. In New Jersey, a good showing here at 16 year freestyle. Sergio going wrist control and elbow. And gets behind quad pod position right into a gut wrench. No, Lamer defends the gut wrench, but not the takedown. So Sergio on the board first. Two to zero. Sergio been dominant throughout the weekend. Four techs, actually three techs and a pin and then an eight two win in the round of 16. Sergio two on one, Lamer defends it, posts off the head, then club to a single. Sergio feels it sprawls, Lamer Clears the front head position. Front head here for Sergio. Passive on Lamer offered and confirmed. That is just his first one. Very quickly, we could see him hit again. He doesn't pick up the offense. Lamer hanging out in overtime. There's Sergio punches to an underhook. Sergio and Lamer, both guys who have raised their stock quite a bit this weekend making it to the finals. Solid guys that are now having a big opportunity, a big stage. Nice drag there from Sergio. Now he's got his head in the hole to the angle. Quad pod position once again and another takedown for Louis Sergio. 
Time going to run out, and he's got a 4-0 lead at the break. Good exchange for him. Getting to the corner. See Ernie Monaco there. The edge. Some people consider him to be the father of club wrestling. I think that's fair. Well, you can go watch a full flow film about it on flowwrestling.org. I will, but not until after the finals. Dasha Lamer getting some words of wisdom from his father. You, you look at Chad Lamer and you wonder why why all the boys aren't that big, but Dashiell's getting some of that size. Would you rather be the older, smaller brother or the younger, larger brother? Older, smaller. Or, I mean, no, I'd, I'd <laughs> rather be y younger, larger, I think. It would be pretty fun if you could beat up your older brother. It'd be great. demoralizing. Sergio in on an attack, switches double. Lamer going switch. Yeah, no points scored yet. Lamer keeps scooting, staying alive, now to the edge of the mat. That'll be two for Sergio. And now he comes behind him. We'll even get a chance on top in parterre. Can't convert anything with it though. Referee stands him back up. A minute 14 to go. Sergio definitely in the driver's seat up six to zero. And that time you saw Sergio get into his own attack. His first two takedowns were go behind off of Lamer's shot. That time it was one of Sergio's own shots. And here Sergio back in on the legs. Sergio trying to make it three champs for Jersey. And there's a nice head pinch from Lamer. He's not out of this match yet. Six to two. Gets Six it to again. four. One more, he'll be in the lead. Adjusting his lock. Sergio's really clamped down on that elbow. And that sequence breathes some life into Lamer. 33 seconds to go. Yeah, he's coming forward. Hard snap. Sergio blocking off with his head. Lamer digging underhooks. Trying to jack Sergio up. Sergio doing a good job of staying low. 10 oh. seconds remaining. Over under body lock. Lamer's gotta go. He tries, but falls to his back. So Louis Sergio slapping the mat. He's a Fargo champion. Eight to four in the end. Backflip. Lands it clean, sticks the landing. Good job, Louis, Louis Sergio. Dasha Lamer gave him everything he had at the end, but Sergio hangs on. I'm always nervous when somebody does a backflip, they're gonna not make it around. Yeah. But well, hat tip to Louis Sergio. If you can do it, it's awesome. Yeah, he did it, no problem. And second flip of the finals. Second flip of the finals. Third New Jersey champ of the finals. Good yeah. work. And I believe that may put them tied with Ohio for third. We'll see, there's still some backside matches happening, so. Now, they are tied both with 117 points. Ohio still with two finalists remaining. So that'll be big. Ohio can only get one champ, but in fact they're guaranteed a champ because they're going head to head at 182, JD. What I'm not sure is in Flow Arena if one champion's points are already entered. That's a good good question. If they calculate. I, I think the way that they the way that it does is it defaults to the lowest possible points that each guy can score. I, I, don't I, think I believe so as well. Yeah, so I think I think we're gonna see um, we're gonna see that those five points added to Ohio's tally after 182. Jersey's still with three uh, Jersey still with one wrestler left in the constellations. Ohio with two left. So Ohio with the higher point potential. This will be an interesting match, JD. 170. Cody Merrill in the red just came out. He is wrestling Gabe Arnold in the blue. Arnold is a big favorite here. Ranked fifth in the country at 170 pounds. 
Cody Merrill not ranked, but obviously he's got, he's got an interesting corner there with Daniel Cormier. Merrill has a funky style. He does some, some wild things. You know Gabe what? Arnold, a heavy favorite, though. That's what it might take to beat Gabe Arnold. Something different. Gabe Arnold in the Penn State shoes. Just something to notice. Something to notice. He's moving forward. Snaps Merrill. Arnold had a five-pointer yesterday. He's got big move potential. Yeah, five-pointer from the quad pod. Got behind, gripped it, and ripped it back, Arch. Cody Merrill wearing that headbutt headgear. Maybe paying homage to Stephen Monk of North Dakota State here in Fargo. I'm sure that's exactly what, what went through his mind. So now about one minute in, and we're going to see someone go on the shot clock here very soon. Merrill on the shot clock, or Merrill, yep, on the clock. Nope, not on the clock. Just on the clock. Oh, he is on the clock. That's right, one minute in, when there's no score, someone has to be on the clock. Arnold keeping the pressure on, really can't Fight breakthrough to the legs, though. Not yet. He's going to get a point now, though, as time expires on that shot clock. 25 to go, first period. Arnold has been really dominant throughout this tournament. He has technical superiority victories all the way through. Cody Merrill has, has been dominant for the most part. He had a crazy quarterfinal that he won by a point last night. He was trailing six to two with like 30 seconds left and ended up Storming back, scoring a whole bunch of points late for the win. Arnold running forward. Right away off the whistle. Not messing around this period. Taking Merrill all the way to the scorer's table. He got one point on the step out and kept running out of bounds in case he could get a second point for pushing him off the stage. Doesn't work like that. Come on, David. You never know. Well, you do know. Worth it. It's worth a shot. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll give you that one. But that's the first offensive point we've seen this match. Verbal warning for, I don't know if that was hands in the face or leading with the head. blocking, blocking off. And now we've got some blood from the bridge of the nose of Merrill. He's gonna get that cleaned up. He's gonna get some words of wisdom from Daniel Cormier. He's got, can't, can't see it on the broadcast, but Cormier with the Olympic rings and the Athens tattoo on the calf. Never bad to have an Olympian in your corner. Blood, not much of an issue. We're back to action, minute and a half to go in this match. Heavy snap, Arnold. Shot Merrill, had his hand on the leg for a little bit. Arnold, not threatened though, able to fend it off. Now he gets to a low level shot, but bails out. Good hard hand fight from Arnold. 
Hasn't given Merrill any openings so far. Nice ankle pick attempt. Good defense here from Merrill though. Thought he was gonna drag out there for a second, but now in front headlock. Now he's got Arnold flat. Arnold holding on to that leg for dear life and it works, still make call, 37 seconds to go. That's good, good wrestling there from Arnold to hang on. Cody Merrill is dangerous in that position. 30 to go. Merrill's Single leg, deep. Merrill. Grounded, offered, one offered, one confirmed. One on the board. So just one point is all Merrill needs to take the lead. 10 seconds to do it. Pressuring forward, five seconds to go. Wow, He Close put Arnold edge. in the zone, but time runs out. One offered, but the time had expired. DC DC and Duran win want one, but I do believe time had run out. They're gonna throw the brick. You gotta throw the you, brick. Yeah, if you you're might the as well in your corner. You might as well. I had a, an eye on the clock and, and time was out. But man, just about as close as it could be for Cody Merrill. Didn't give up. They're gonna review this and we'll have an official outcome, but I do believe we're gonna see Gabe Arnold holding a stop sign here momentarily. Controlled performance from Gabe Arnold. Rarely came out of position. Not his most offensive performance, but anytime you go home with a Fargo stop sign, I'd say you did okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you know we've seen we've seen that a lot today in the finals with guys maybe not open it up quite as much as they did throughout the rest of the tournament. It's a it's a very different atmosphere in here than it has been the rest of the week. Normally it's 25 mats, wall-to-wall -wall whistles and bright lights. Now it's the brightest lights shining right on the spotlight. Big Coming stage. Out of dark, big stage. WWE entrance. Yes. <laughs> I really want someone to come out in full WWE costume and rip it off Well, once they get in the corner. Strange request, but we have four matches left, so, you know, don't rule it out. Maybe, you know, coffin entrance, you know, <laughs> Undertaker style, or maybe coffin, someone falls out the bottom. Maybe somebody <laughs> carries in a coffin and somebody falls out the side or the bottom. And they're taking, taking their time looking at this review. Maybe it's closer than we thought. Well, the, I mean, the, the action did go off the map, but it, it was clearly after the clock had expired. Uh, well, that's what I thought, but. You can see them reviewing it now, but. We um, can't see the clock on our replay. Ah, you can in the corner there, yeah, there, yep. It's clearly at clearly zero. Clearly, double zeros. It's clearly at zero, but not, by, I mean, not by a lot, by maybe just a second. Song on the PA coming on for Duran. I'm not sure what's taking so long. Yeah, I really don't know either. Here. And Gabe Arnold, like I said, controlled performance here in the finals, but dominant performance that led up to him that could possibly get him the OW. He's definitely in the running at least. Yeah, absolutely. He, I think Arnold and Kyler Larkin are probably, probably leaders in the clubhouse, although Man, there were some some finals performances, some come from behind moments that that certainly could could uh, could earn some guys that award. You think about Joel Adams needing a point with a fresh start at 14 seconds, or needing a takedown or two points, and he gets it. That's incredible. And now they're putting it. You can see the review on your screen right now. You see the clock at zero, and then Gabe steps out. Here we go. There is the confirmation. Gabe Arnold, your winner by score of three to one with the failed challenge.
Gabe Arnold's fired up. Team Georgia. Georgia with the champ. Part of a hard, hard working group of guys that's come through the state of Georgia. Man, a lot of respect there between Arnold and Merrill. And there you see Gabe Arnold getting that stop sign. Pumped up, and he should be. A lot of nerves, I imagine, during that review process. He probably yeah. felt like he had the points. It secured. felt like a long time for us. I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. For Arnold. Oh, uh, man, there he is. Big hug from his dad, Bill Arnold. Can't see it on the screen, but, man, pretty pretty cool, pretty special, the moments these kids share with their, with their families. And you got a replay coming here. Big sequence. They're getting that step out was huge for Gabe. There he is. There are those Penn State shoes you were talking about. All Ohio battle at 182. Camden McDaniel in the red coming out right now. Not far behind him will be Luke Venadia. In the blue, Venadia from Brexville. McDaniel is going to be a junior at Tees Valley High School. Both these guys, interesting path to the finals. They, they wrestled the Mirasola twins in the semis. Connor and Cole Mirasola finished third and fourth, respectively, in this bracket. And then we have two Ohio teammates squaring off in the finals. Shot there for McDaniel. But chest wrap for Vanadian. He's going to score one, two, three, four points with two chest wraps. Good counter offense there from Vanadia. Vanadia brothers, super solid. In Vanadia used that chest wrap to a lot of effect in his semifinal victory. He won with it on a last second chest wrap, actually, to win seven to six. Not able to get to it that time, though. McDaniel finishes his shot. Vanadia a little slow to get back to the center. Both these guys were placers this year at the Ohio State Tournament. And wow, there's Vanadia. Nice go behind. Looking for a gut is Vanadia. Vanadia seventh at the Ohio State Championships. McDaniel was a finalist, finished second. Forty-five to go, first period. Uh oh. Van Excuse me, McDaniel attacking the body and falls right into a gut wrench. Let's it go though. Transitions down to a lace. Venadia pointing to his nose to the ref. He wanted to stop for blood time, but the referee's gonna let him work through parterre. Went for it, didn't get it. Yeah, you know what? We care about blood safety, but not at the expense of offense. That's right. There you get a good shot of that bloody nose. I'm pretty sure even OSHA allows you to finish your leg lace attempt before they make you clean up the blood. Of course. What's a little blood? Yeah, no big deal. McDaniel with a nice six to two win over the other Mirasola brother.
in the semifinal. We could have seen an all Mirasola final, but we get an all Ohio final instead. Yes, we had finalists from Ohio, Actually, third and fourth place finishers. Mirasola's from. both wrestled back for third yeah. and forfeited. They forfeit to each other. That I, might be a family. I don't know who technically got the third place, but. Connor did. Connor ended up third officially. Okay. I wonder if they flipped a coin or, or what? They should have wrestled. I think so, but I have a feeling that the Mr. and Mrs. Mirasola might have had a problem with that. They might have some unwritten rules, or maybe they're written rules at the house. And Benadia now, oh, just a uh, hawking a loogie off the mat. I thought he was about to leave the mat. Better off the mat than on the mat. I always say. <laughs> I've heard you say that many times. <laughs> 15 seconds to go, first period. McDaniel really coming forward late in his first. That brings the first period to a close. Vanadia up six to four. Still a little blood on the mat. It looks like they're gonna get that cleaned up during the break. Vanadia with the lead. McDaniel has kind of gained the momentum second half of that first period. Luke's older brother, Ben Vanadia, going to be a freshman at Purdue. He's in the Concy semifinals at 220 in the senior division. You can watch those tonight. And it's uh -oh. McDaniel getting big. Picking up the takedown, taking the lead on criteria, trying to run a gut wrench to the right. Venadia grabbing some back, thinking about stepping over, but McDaniel just comes back on top. No point scored. McDaniel got him up, and I thought I thought he might be able to go for four. Venadia, nice job putting his chest to the mat. Venadia attacks, gives up the lead, and then it's right back to his offense. And nose plug goes flying. McDaniel dropping down to a leg. Tried the trip, Vanadia back. Didn't work at first, but sticks with it. Ended up getting it done. Two points on the takedown. Takes the lead outright with a little over a minute to go. Looking for that leg lace. He's close. He's got it deep. I think if he just keeps running his feet, Vanadia might go. But they rule out of bounds. Vanadia points to the blood. Trying to get somebody to pay attention to this blood spatter evidence. And now they will clean it up. Dexter up there. <laughs> Team Ohio coach with a bucket hat. Pretty cool. Yeah, if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> anything's cool if you're into that <laughs> sort of thing. Ohio, a good showing here at the 16U Freestyle Division. They're in fourth right now. And like we said, could hop up above New Jersey probably after this match. They will, I believe. And neither Ohio nor New Jersey have any other wrestlers left to, to compete after this match. So I think we will see Ohio finish in third. Jersey in fourth. Wisconsin's in fifth. They don't have, they have one finalist left, but nobody, or but they can't score enough points to, to pass either of those teams. Nice attack from McDaniel. One on the step out for McDaniel.
Stutter step from Vanadian, then dives into a shot. Vanadian gets out of the front headlock position. He's now got 20 seconds. McDaniel has just done a really good job scratching and clawing his way back into this, taking momentum, but Venedia still an opportunity. Short time left on the clock. Time's up. That'll do it. Camden McDaniel gets the victory. There's the flex. Fargo champ, 182 pounds. And you know what, JD? They they had already given those points to Ohio. So Jersey is going to finish ahead of them. No. Ohio, Ohio now in third with 122 points. Is that right? Okay. For a moment, my, my, my uh, team score said that Ohio had nobody left in the championship, and uh, but the points weren't awarded yet. You refreshed it at the exact moment you had to. Now we've refreshed it <laughs> again, and you, I see that just as we suspected, Ohio is going to finish in third. So Pennsylvania going to be the team champs here. They still have one more finalist to compete. Minnesota going to finish in second. They have two more finalists left to go. Then it'll be Ohio, New Jersey, and Wisconsin as we see the replays from this last match. Hundred and ninety five pounders coming up. Max McKinley from Minnesota is gonna take on Sonny Sasso. Sonny Sasso, another younger but larger brother. Yes, much larger than Sammy yes, he's Sasso. Much larger. Sammy actually in Sonny's corner. It is kind of funny when he goes to the corner for advice as he has a good three, four inches on Sammy and 40 pounds. Yes. Sonny Sasso has had a really nice postseason since, since the conclusion of PIAAs. It's grown a lot and now look good. Coming out aggressive. Yeah. Heavy snaps. McKinley is a big move guy. He is super powerful. Nelly with an impressive win over Carter Neves in the semifinals. That that match was crazy. It was the first 12 points of the match were four pointers being exchanged, and then McKinley kind of took control. After that, he is so very very impressive. Carter Neves is very formidable. Shot from McNelly, trying to elevate, gets behind Sasso and puts him down for two. McKinley trying to get a gut wrench locked up. He's bleeding. More blood time. The nose plug, Ben Venadia's nose plug is still on the mat. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. And they are now. He tried to warn people about that nose plug on many occasions. He did. And the referee is now getting the attention of the trainer to come and take that away. Yeah, he's not touching that. Blood safety. Blood safety. Yeah, there's that shot of the height difference between Sammy and Sonny Sasso. There was, there was somebody standing mat side yesterday commenting about how cool it was that Sammy Sosa was coaching for Team Pennsylvania. But it's not Sammy Sosa. That'd be pretty cool if it was. Nice attack from McKinley right away off the restart. Looking like a point for Sasso. Yeah, threw him off him and to the out of bounds. Sasso. 
shot from Sasso, but nice reattack from McNelly. And he comes out front to the double and will score two points. Good reattack there. Nice effort to scramble and defend from Sasso, but McKinley just a little too, a little too persistent on the finish. Sasso biting on the fake from McNelly. Now a shot, once again to that single leg. Sasso reaching over, trying to expose McNelly. Four offered and confirmed for McNelly. I wonder if we'll see the brick here. That we will, like, we definitely will. Yep, there it is. That looked like Sasso's move to me and maybe a two and two situation. Um, they're gonna review and see what they decide, but but that looked to me like Sasso created the leverage for that turn to happen. And if not, it's, it's at least a good brick because Best case scenario, you get two or four. McNally gets one. Worst case, McNally gets one extra point and you're down eight instead of seven. There's the risk reward there. Definitely favors storing the brick. That's a good point. We'll get a look at that thing here. Yeah, you see that is Sasso's attempted. That's move. a two and two. I think it's two and two. Yeah, McNally then held Sasso on his back long enough to where he should get two points for the exposure, not just one. But I think Sasso stopped McNelly's action, his move. Eh, maybe not. Hard to say. I think it was enough for Sasso that he stopped McNelly's movement from going forward and took him off to the side and exposed him. And then McNelly held on the back for two. Yeah. I agree. If I'm scoring this, it's two and two. Making the score six to three instead of eight to one. That's a pretty big swing in favor of Sasso. Yeah, that's how I would that's how I would score it, but hey, I'm not I'm not certified to be an official. We'll see what they decide. Got a panel over One there. One thing I'm certified in is the ability to critique critique officials. Yes. I got my gold certification <laughs> in that as well. <laughs> And here, they're giving their official ruling. They're grabbing the red brick, but they're going four and two, not two and two. Four, two, and then one. Four, two, and one ends up, you know, net net one point for, so it'll be, so it'll be, It'll be 10 to three. Nope, it'll be nine to three, sorry. Yes. So a six point lead instead of a seven point lead. Now, I mean that four points is something to be aware of. Should be nine to four. Or nine to, nine nine to, to three. three, sorry, nine to three. Yeah, down by six with that four-pointer. Sasso either gonna have to get a four-pointer himself or more than six points. And you know, I I don't think yeah, what? Okay, yeah, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to figure this out. I I'm Should not be sure. nine to three. I don't know what the what the holdup is. There we go. The official said it correctly. Yeah. Okay. 9-3. Here we go. We're correct. Scoreboard's correct. Let's wrestle. Shot there from Sasso. Comes up to the seatbelt. McNally holding on to the wizard. Sasso clearing the wizard, scoring the takedown. Oh no. Caution and one, offered and confirmed. McKinley put that head down. Can't do that. 
and he starts back down in parterre. Sasso will get an opportunity to work on top, immediately jumping down to the legs, then back up to the gut. McKinley keeping those knees apart. Smart, smart wrestling down there. Shot from McNelly. Sasso fights it off. Minute to go. Nice. Ooh, close go behind, but man, McKenna's oh. still wrestling. That was an incredible exchange. Each wrestler, it looked like they were just about to have a go behind for the other evaded. Sasso kind of standing straight up. Getting his footwork going. 35. Attention, it goes against McKinley. Yeah, the next one will be a caution and one point for Sasso, and the second caution Ooh. against McNelly. Ooh. Good job by Sasso getting that right arm up, blocking McKinley from coming around, then he dives in on the ankles. This is gonna burn a lot of, could burn a lot of clock though. They're gonna go two for Sasso, he's down by a point. One won't be enough, he needs a takedown. McKinley, Adjusting his socks. <laughs> a whole generation of wrestlers now knows that strategy. Short time, Sasso's gotta come. There's a shot, fake, shot, fake. Five seconds. McKinley gonna get a takedown right at the buzzer. Sasso frustrated, but great effort from him. Trying to mount a comeback. McKinley, though, blows the crowd a kiss, flexes on him. Good victory for McKinley. But wow, Sonny Sasso made that ending very dramatic. Good performance from both wrestlers. Really impressive performance. and. Man, that was one of my favorite matches of the finals. That second period was wild. Sasso frustrated at the end. It's tough, giving that much effort and, and still didn't turn out your way, but heck of a match. There you see the original takedown for McNally, the limp arm. There's the second takedown. There was the weird challenge exchange by Sasso where he scored two, but McNally, your winner. Yes, he is. Brings us to our final two matches and there you see from Wisconsin, Coy Hopke. Super tough, Hopke wins just about everything he enters. And he's gonna have Jacob Walker of Iowa from, from your homeland, J.D. That's right. The first finalist for Iowa. Both these guys have some power. Walker out of Waverly, Iowa. He was a state, he was a runner up this year in the state of Iowa. Hoppy drops in on that single. 
Nice finish. Immediately hopping up. Coming cross face now, looking for a gut wrench. Good gut wrench, running forward. That's Gets good it. gut wrench technique there. Running the feet. Hopke on a mission, man. He's really coming forward hard. Hopke just finished his freshman year of high school. He was a state champ, 220. Front head for Hopke, now trying to come behind. Walker still holding on to the left leg of Hopke. Now Hopke gets past it, scores, increases his lead to six points right away, going back to that gun and he's got all the mat to work now. Absolutely. Saw that technique work earlier. He gets it to go here. One more would end it. Trying to go to the right this time, gritting his teeth, running his feet. Gets Hopke it. Gets it. Man, dominant Fargo title. A little under 90 seconds is all it took for Coy Hopke to get his hand raised and a stop sign on a big stage. Every match except his quarterfinal, he teched or pinned his opponent. It's pretty good. Very good, super dominant. And there you're gonna get that stop sign. He's, you know, we've seen various strategies for taking the stop sign photo. Pretty pretty calm, cool, and collected there from Hopke. Yeah. We got another upper Midwest battle coming our way. At 285, and there you see Hopke in that gut wrench. Man. Only so much one man's arm can do <laughs> in the face of a... Yes. <laughs> Koi Hockey gut wrench. I don't even think my arm could defend it. Don't sell yourself short. Thank you, David. 285 pounds. This is the last match of the day. In the red, it's Will Sather. Sather, Will Sather of Minnesota. He's taking on Navarro Shunky of South Dakota. Shunky gonna be coming out in the blue. Minnesota and South Dakota are two states that I would, without having any other context, predict to be in the Fargo finals at heavyweight. Yeah, it's, yeah, maybe so, maybe so. South Dakota had some good heavyweights over the years. Some of them going to play football at the division one level, but still big men come out of Minnesota and South Dakota. Yes, they do. Will Sather, just a, finishing his freshman year, he'll be a sophomore at Eden Prairie High School next year in Minnesota. Shunky, gonna be a sophomore at Brandon Valley High School and he gets the early step out. By the way, this red carpet had no problems until the heavyweights ran out and now it is all kinds <laughs> of messed up. Shot there from Sather. Shunky looking for the go behind. Sather holding on to the wrist of Shunky, but it's not enough. He's able to get behind and score now, looking for a lace. He's got it. There's one. He's still got it locked and it loosened up a little bit. He readjusts, rolls through, but. The ankles slip out just to one lace for Shunky, but he still has a five to zero lead halfway through this first period. Five zero for Shunky, under a minute to go. Trying to make it a Fargo champ for South Dakota. He's got Terry Pack of Legends of Gold in the corner.
short time left here in period number one, and that's how it will come to a close. The push out, the takedown and lace for Navarro Shunky gives him a five to zero lead. saw pinnacle coach Brandon Paulson there in the corner for Sather White him down. That's a good coach to have in your corner in a freestyle or a Greco match especially. Absolutely and good adjustments after the break dives in on a shot see if he can finish. Chunky really Slowing down that attack. Good idea by Sather. He's just not able to ex not able to get the finish. Hard caller from Shunky. Action call goes against Sather. Just an attention though, no shot clock. There's a low shot from Sather. Same kind of position as before. And Shunky's gonna roll him through and get two points. Actually, that might've been white paddled. I believe it was. was white paddled, so no points for Shunky. Shot from Sather, but easy go behind for Shunky. He saw that one coming. Yeah, he, after this, Two shots earlier in the period, he kind of knew that was coming, and now he's got a leg lace locked. One more will end it. And that's just what Navarro Shunky does. Ends it with the leg lace. He is your winner and your 285-pound cadet Fargo champion. Impressive performance from Navarro Shunky. And he is your last champion here in the cadet finals. JD, we had some incredible finals. We're gonna get a look at Navarro Shunky's replay and it's probably worth mentioning after that, the champs that we've had, I mean, some incredible matches and can run through those after Shunky gets his stop sign and we get to Enjoy some highlights from his match. Also a reminder, we still have semifinals for Junior Freestyle coming up later tonight. Won't want to miss those. And here's Shunky walking out, doing damage to the red carpet. And there's that leg lace. There's the go behind that set up his final leg lace that he used to end the match. Chunky, nice job locking this up. And there is the end of this match. So Fargo champs this year, we had Javon Yarbrough at 88, Mac Mogger 94 pounds, Seth Mendoza at 100, Anthony Knox 